So I don't know, do you want to have or your husband? I'm happy either way. Okay. So what, uh, what really I'm a Christian, follower okay. of Jesus. So, so basically, my question with regards to Christianity is um, how do you believe that you will attain salvation? What is the main thing you need to believe as a Christian in order to attain salvation? Um, so we believe in Jesus, uh, that he is the Son of God, promised throughout the whole of history, um, from Genesis all the way through to when he was born as a human and took on our flesh, and that he, um, on the cross, took on the weight of human sin, died and was buried and rose again defeating death and uh, through him he is the centre of all reality, through him we can have um, eternal life through a relationship with him because he is the source of life and the source of all things. Okay, so you believe that in order for you to remain or attain salvation is to believe in Jesus Christ as what? To believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Son of God? Yeah. Okay. The promised Messiah. So is there a difference between Son of God and God? Uh, no. No? No. So you believe he is God? Yeah. Okay. And Jesus Christ himself? Uh, or even the previous prophets, did they advocate in believing in Jesus Christ as God Almighty? Yes, all the way through the Old Testament. So can you show me where Moses said to believe in Jesus Christ as God Almighty? So all the way through, in Exodus 33, we see Moses meet face to face with the Lord. And we see that he um, meets face to face and has a conversation with the Lord God as a man would talk to his friend, so as we're talking now. Um, in slightly later in that chapter, we read that Yahweh can never be seen by human eyes. And so in that chapter, so we see that uh, Moses meets with uh, the Son of God, who is the image of the Invisible Father, and um, he has a conversation with this um, God who is fleshly and who can have a conversation as a man speaks to his friend. Um, and then we see the Father later in the chapter, and Moses, he passes by Moses, but Moses can never see his face, and the chapter specifically says that. So that's one example of uh, Do you the remember my God question? the Father. Yeah, it's one example. Of it. So of God the Father with the Son and all the way through that we see um, uh, in Isaiah 53 we see a promise of a Messiah who will come and who will take on human sin and uh, defeat that so do you remember my question yeah it was what about was my question? yeah it was about Moses believing in the Son of God no that wasn't my question okay so your entire question your entire answer was not relevant to my question right that's so the, the question I ask is where did any of the previous prophets like Moses yeah you can name any prophet doesn't matter who um, specifically telling you to worship in the Son of God as God Almighty. So I'm giving you an example of when Moses met with the Lord as a man with his friends as an example. But it's not, not the meeting I'm, I'm interested in. It's more like worshipping him as God Almighty. Um, so all, all the way through the Old Testament. Give me one example. Me well, one. the tabernacle and the fact that the Lord came to the tabernacle um, as a tent of meeting place and met with, um, there was a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire that showed the presence of the Lord there and the whole church of Israel worship the living God um, in that so. so you're telling me Moses actually said somewhere to believe in the in the, uh, in the Son of God as God Almighty yeah well, in, well just all, all, all the way through the Bible no, I want to know something specific like rather than so, okay so Exodus 33 so okay, why would Moses say that he meets with the Lord as a man meets face to face with a friend if he wasn't the Lord God so when you say he uses the word Yahweh in that chapter when you when you use the term Lord has the term Lord been used for anyone other than God Almighty in the Bible? Um, so, yeah, I mean, we see Abraham is spoken of, but it's a slightly different word in Hebrew. So What's the word? The word in, um, the word Lord in Hebrew is capitalized in our translations. So there's no capitals in Hebrew, so but what is the word? No, what I'm is talking about the English translation. Yeah. I'm not so, a Hebrew scholar, so I can't speak. So what is the word in Hebrew that is used for Lord? Yahweh is used. Yahweh? I believe, yeah. Andrew's studied more Hebrew than okay. me, so. So maybe you can ask him if you're not sure. Yeah. But if you're telling me that Jesus Christ is called Yahweh anywhere in the Old Testament, then I really need to see where that is. And has it been identified as so the I'm son? not a Hebrew scholar, so I'm not going to be able to speak okay. that. What about the term Elohim? Elohim is... Elohim means what? It means God. It means Lord or God? It means, well, it's spoken of God. In the beginning, God created Elohim. Do you know Moses is called Elohim? In, 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 in Exodus chapter 7, okay. verse number 1. Again, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, so I can't speak to whether that's true right here. You can confirm with uh, Dave, uh, sorry, with the uh, paper boy here or with your husband if you want. But he says, Moses is Elohim to the Pharaoh. 
So ter the term Elohim, the Lord, which is also translated as Lord, yes, is used for angels, is used for true gods, for false gods, for God Almighty even, yes. So that's why I'm telling you, the term Lord doesn't mean God Almighty. So just because Yahweh as well, which is only used for the God. Yeah, but we know that Jesus himself, so if I, if I asked you, did Yahweh die on the cross? <laughs> Well, God died on the cross. Yahweh? Jesus is the Son of God. Did Yahweh die on the cross? Yeah, I mean, if Jesus is spoken of as being Yahweh in the Old Testament and he came as the Son of God, then he died on the cross. Then was can can Yahweh die? Jesus is Yahweh, so God That's what I'm can asking. die. Yeah, God can die on the cross. But God chose to die. But God says in the Bible he's immortal. Yeah, so. He, first, first like, he is full of life, he is the source of all life and so we can know eternal life by knowing Jesus because he is the source of life but he chose to take on our sin and to die, he chose that. No but he says God doesn't die, whether he chose or not that's irrelevant, the point here is this, but wait, wait, listen, listen, listen to the question, it's very important, if God says that he's immortal, Yes? Yeah, we'd be diverse, I think. Yeah, please do. Yeah, paper boy, it'd be nice if you don't interfere, please. No, no, I would like for him to be You know when we have too many people yeah, talking? Yeah, I said you want to be diverse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First Timothy... Please, look in context. Yeah, yeah please okay. do. Because some people like okay. to test the context. First Timothy 6.16 says... This, uh, sorry, it says, um, He alone is immortal, who lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. Yes? God if I made a mistake, you can tell me. Yeah. Okay? But this is basically... God the Father is the, hear me out. Is the living God who no man no. can see or hear me out, see. Hear me out. Yeah. So this passage here is talking about God the Father. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. It says He alone is immortal. Yeah, it's divine. Okay? That's why it's comparing. You're, you're interfering again. He alone is immortal. If I said, you alone are the woman here, can there be another woman here? I mean, Using I'm not looking you, kind of this, No, no, so. I'm saying, I'm saying, this statement of mine, you alone are a woman in this crowd. Can there be an, another woman if, based on that statement I made? Um, yeah, because you're not an immortal God, so... No, you're, you're not listening to the question again. No, I am listening to it. It doesn't really make sense in the context of it's the a, It's a very simple English phrase. Yeah. You alone are a woman in this crowd. Yes. Do you understand the statement? I understand okay. the statement. Okay, so... But I don't From your understanding of the statement, can there be another woman? Well, there could be, because another woman could come and join. I'm not asking you what will happen in future. It's a simple, don't. It's a simple understanding of, of an analogy. So without you having to guys complicate the analogy, just simple statement. Yeah. He alone. Sorry, you alone are a woman yeah. in this circle. Yeah, I'm and a woman in this circle. So based on that statement alone, yeah. forget about what's going to happen next yeah. or what happened before. Just based on the statement, what do you understand? Is this possible for another woman to be there? Um, if I'm the only woman in a room, then no. Exactly. So if I said you alone are the woman in a room, yeah, that's fine. Yes. Then by that statement, anyone who hears this statement will understand you're the only person who's a woman. Others are not women. Okay? Yeah. So when Jesus says, sorry, when the, when the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.16, He alone is immortal. You specifically stated that this passage is talking about the Father. So if it says the Father alone is immortal, can anybody else be immortal? And by the term immortal, I mean someone who is not subject to death. Well, clearly the verse is... Don't interfere, please. Should read the verse because it distinguishes I'm, I'm, I'm between happy God's nature and man's nature. Be in the conversation as well, because so. it distinguishes man and God to God. So if he says that he alone is immortal, nature. what do you understand by that phrase? So the answer would be God, Jesus is human nature, can, flesh can... Christ, which he will display at the proper time, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in an approachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. Whom is that talking about? He, that is talking about the fact that Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection, he has defeated death, he has immortality because he's gone through death and come out in life at the so end. So what does immortal mean to you? And he is sat at the right hand of the Father, who no one can see. You're, you're, immortal is life full of what life. What is it, what is immortal to you? The meaning of immortal in the context of that word? The the meaning of immortal in the context of this verse is that you cannot be killed because he's already gone through death and come out the other side. So you're side. saying immortal is someone who cannot be killed? Yes. Okay. Was he killed on the cross? This verse yes. is written after Jesus has already resurrected. I know. Yes. That's why it makes it even so more important. No, because he's now immortal because he's gone through death and come out in I don't think you understand the meaning of immortal. No, immortal doesn't I mean... I understand the word immortal. You don't understand Okay, so you said answer. you said immortal means what? Immortal means in the context it, of that word. Yeah, yeah, immortal means that you're um, not able to die. It means that you're not mortal. That is what the word exactly. Means. He is not mortal That's because fine. he has gone through mortality. Okay. He has died. So, he has resurrected, <laughs> and he now is immortal. Okay, let me make it. Let me let me ask you a slightly different question. Do you believe that Father 
who is not Jesus, is the father immortal? Yes. Has the father ever died? No. Okay. Now, with regards to Jesus, is Jesus immortal? He is now. I didn't ask you now or later. That's is he immortal? The answer to your question is that Jesus is immortal now. Okay. So you're telling me anyone who, resur who resurrects is immortal? Yes. Are you going to be resurrected one day? Yes. Are you then immortal? Yes. Okay, so that statement there, the term only is there before the term immortal. Or the term alone. He alone is immortal. Do you remember the example? Wait, yeah, wait, no, wait, hear me out. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, because I'm just addressing your point. No, there. no, you will let he me finish the statement. He alone is immortal because he is the only one who has gone through resurrection. He is the one who is the first fruit of the resurrection. At those the are your words. It doesn't no, say that in there. Yeah. He alone is immortal. It says those words. We're not immortal now okay. because we haven't. It been also says no one has seen him. No one has seen the Father but the Son. So if you read the other verses okay. in the Bible, so once again, no one has seen the Father but the Son. Yeah, so once again, is this passage talking about the Son or the Father? Yeah. All the way through the Bible, passages no, no, this talk passage, about this God passage. the Father and God the no, Son. This passage in particular, 1 Timothy 6.16, is it talking about the Son or the Father? It's talking about the fact that Jesus is at the side of the Father, unapproachable, unapproachable. When he says he alone is immortal, whom no man has seen or can see, that particular passage, is it about the Father or the Son? If it's talking about no man ever having Don't tell me if, don't tell me if. This passage, whom is it talking about? I am about? answering a question. Okay. It's talking about the fact that we cannot ever see the Father because only Jesus can see the so Father. So is that passage, once again, so once again, Jesus is in the immediate light, as well. in the immediate light once again, of the Father. Mm. Once again, is that passage, mm. let's clarify it once and for all. That passage, he alone is immortal, he whom no man point. has seen or can because see. He's a lot of is that, please stop interrupting, paper boy. That's very rude of you. He's asking okay. many questions. You see, no Muslims are interrupting. Oh, no Muslims are interrupting. I think it's only fair that if one person speaks to another person, others just gets all. You can find someone else to speak to if you want. I've made this clear many times. Okay? What, I, what I'm saying is that it says, he alone is immortal, whom no man has seen. Had people seen Jesus? Yeah, people have so seen Jesus. Is that passage about Jesus or the Father? The passage is about the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is resurrected and is sat at the right hand of the Father who no man has seen and is in an inapproachable light. So you're telling he me... He can never approach the throne okay. of God the Father. So you're telling me that Jesus was not seen by anyone? No, I'm not saying that. So how can that... Really, that. Wait, wait. Once again, this is the third time I'm asking. Is that passage, he alone is immortal, listen this time, he alone is immortal whom no man had seen or can see. Is it about the Son or the Father? Can you see Jesus right now? You see, question is a question. Yeah, that's fine. But I will answer your question yeah. once you answer mine. This passage, is it about the Father or the Son? Please answer it's about sincerely. The it's about the sun. So Jesus had never been seen. I've said that already. I did answer that previously. What is that? I said answered your question previously. Which is what? It was about the, uh, that this passage is about God the Son. It says specifically. So Jesus never died, 14. and Jesus was never seen by anyone. No, that's not true. Because I've addressed both of your points. I've addressed the fact that you, you haven't. Said, yes, I have. How? Because it says that he's immortal. Because he's already been through death. And in his, like, when he took on flesh, he died on the cross, he was resurrected, he has gone through mortality into immortality, and that is the promise that we have when we trust in him. Do you see the contradictions in the terms, in, in, the, ter in the phrase you made? When no, you I'm answering your question. But can I answer without interrupting? I'll let you speak, okay? You said he's immortal because he's been through death. Yes. The term death means what? He died. Yeah. Okay, so anyone who dies is called mortal or immortal? So he was mortal, he died, he rose again, and he is immortal. Okay, so in other words, you're telling me that God changed his nature from becoming immortal to mortal, dying by his own creation, and then become, and then rising again from death. In other words, in other words, you're telling me that God can change his nature despite the fact that in the Bible, in the book of Malachi, in the chapter 3, verse 6, it clearly says that God doesn't change his nature. So you're telling me he became I'm from immortal to mortal and then again immortal. No, Doesn't make sense but at, all. at no point is he not God. Like you're assuming that when he died, he was no longer God and that he changed his nature. Yes. I am saying as soon as immortal becomes mortal, i.e. he dies. No. Let me finish the statement at least. I know, but like I've answered your question. No, you haven't. Yes, because have. you have contradicted yourself. Just because you don't understand my answer. Okay. Let me know when you finish. I haven't answered no, it. I've understood your answer very well. <laughs> However, one thing you haven't realized is the contradiction in the statement you made. You said he went through death. Yeah. The term immortal in the English language. I understand. You're doing it again while I'm means. talking, you're interrupting. I know, but you're reinforcing things. I'm not reinforcing anything. I'm looking the at the definition based on the Bible and based on the English language as well. The term immortal means not subject to death, let alone for three days and three nights. 
not subject to death even for a microsecond like the father the father never ever died no he didn't good and i didn't the say son that he according to you died on the cross for three days and three nights yeah. do you agree so for three days and three nights was he mortal or immortal well he was obviously mortal because Thank you. you cannot die Thank if you, you are okay. immortal. so if he was let me finish when, let me no finish. no because i've already addressed the answer i've already given no, you no you haven't you've contradicted yes, yourself I have. no i haven't you have. no i haven't where's your husband by the way i would like to have a word with him as well I mean, maybe if, she, if he agrees with you because the well, thing he is, will because it's a Christian well, it, faith and he's it also is, a Christian. No, not necessarily all Christians agree. Trust me. I've, yeah, well, I've come across many. In fact, if I ask everyone about the definition of Trinity, I get as many answers as, as the number of people I ask. Because you see, when Jesus, the whole purpose of you being saved is because of the death of Jesus. Am I right? Yeah, and so, resurrection. The yeah, death exactly. And resurrection so of Jesus. The, if I ask you this question, does death and resurrection apply to an immortal being? Listen to the question before you answer. Yeah. Immortal means me, being means, and correct me if my, de my definition is wrong. Immortal from what I've seen, yes, and this is uh, the term uh, Athanasia in Greek. Okay. Okay, it means not subject to death. Yeah. Means anytime. Not for a part of the day or night, not for a part of three days or night, not even for a microsecond. Like the father means no death touches him. No death applies to him. Okay? That is the father, not the son. The son, according to you, if you do not believe in the crucifixion, you wouldn't be a Christian. Am I right? Yeah. So for you to be, be a Christian, someone you, so that, that is one thing that you really have to believe. And this applies to all the Christians, to the Mormons, to the, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, to the Christian uh, born again, to the Catholics, the Protestants. Everyone believes in this one doctrine, the doctrine of crucifixion. Yes? I'm glad paper boy went. Okay. So what I'm saying is here is that Jesus, Jesus' death is something that you have to believe as a fundamental doctrine. Yeah, if you, you cannot... do believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus, you're not exactly. Christian. So the question now, which you have to really understand the question this time and answer is this. Does death and res resurrection apply to a being who never dies at all? An immortal being. So it doesn't apply to God the Father because we've already established that. Yes. Um, Jesus came, he took on human flesh in order to, to address our sin because the only way that we can be forgiven and know true life is for death to be defeated. So when Jesus came, he took on mortality, he took on human flesh, he went through death and the grave and took on all of the sin of the world and he was risen again to life and defeated death and then became immortal. Okay, so for you, I think the meaning of immortal is lost in this. It is Lost. Look, I let you speak without the intro. I know, let, let that's me, fine, but I'm, you're being quite patronizing. No, no, I'm not patronizing. That I don't understand no, the because word you don't actually. Because I do. based on what you said, you said he went through death. That itself disqualifies Jesus of any mortality. So he's mortal, he goes through death, the resurrection makes him immortal. No, so, yes, the resurrection yes, makes him mortal. No, it doesn't because he defeats death. Okay, so in other words, that. He cannot die right, once he's In other words, that death. passage I gave you in 1 Timothy. In the 1 Timothy. First, first Timothy six, bro, bro, one, one second. First Timothy six sixteen. Yeah, yeah, wait. First, first Timothy six sixteen says he alone. The term alone signifies. Hold on. He is the only one. He is the only one to whom it applies. It shows exclusivity. Sorry, See what I, can't I mean? Concentrate on what. Um, there's like exclusive. He's probably talking from himself. He's not talking from the Quran. He's talking from his view. By the way, if you just talking from his own view, I'm explaining from the Quran view yeah. as a Muslim. Because stop, stop a minute, stop. Okay, anyway, I think on and listen to explain. Sorry, it's getting a little bit overly aggressive, so I'm just gonna make sorry, an exit no, sorry, and maybe you can talk to someone else. But I'm if you want, if you want, you can continue this. We don't have to respond to this. Yeah, no, that's the reason fine. I didn't want many like, people to interrupt. I'm, I'm just kind of, I don't think I've, I've made my point. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you something, please. I'm gonna ask you one question. You can go. That's fine. Do you? Do I do not talk to hacklers. Do you have a spirit? Do you have a? I do not talk to hacklers. So anyway, I think with this we have, we probably can do it. The ones who watch the, the videos the the guys guys come here. here come in the side you cannot ask him who only run away yes you are, you are, you are i don't know from mad people you're right yeah yeah you are insane <laughs> so basically uh, Ashim, you only run away. Get away from me. What's wrong with you? Don't shout in my ear. I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm shouting on his ear. I stand up and talk. Get away from me. Get away. Okay. You see, this is this is called harassment. It's not harassment. Any, any camera. Anyone who shouts in the ear is called harassment. You touch me first. Yes. You're a liar. You stop heckling. 
I'm not heckling you. You're a liar. You are empty. You have nothing to offer. You're a liar. You have nothing to offer. You're a liar. You What's this, man? Go away. Okay, you're a liar. liar. I agree you see, with you. Sir, you see how, how, you. how much pain the dawah is causing? Alhamdulillah. Liar. Liar. When the truth comes, this is what happens. The falsehood comes as well. But they disappear. They have to disappear because the falsehood cannot stand the truth. The point I wanted to make to that lady over there was that death only applies to mortals. It does not apply to immortals. She kept insisting that that applied to Jesus, but he's still immortal. That shows contradiction. Yes, the reason Femi is very angry is because I destroyed him very badly, and he's still licking his wounds. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.